Well, <coughs> uh, we look at the uh, roadmap and uh, the recent occurrences, including, you know, going back to 10 years, uh, 20 years, maybe 100 years, we found out something very interesting, that every time uh, when the world is encountering crisis, whether it's resulting from military conflict or uh, economic crisis, and it creates another wave of uh, uh, opportunity. So I would simply turn it as a redistribution of wealth. Okay. Now, the old business model will be uh, forgotten, and uh, the old wealthy people will disappear during the crisis, and the, the new waves will come in, the new entrepreneur, the new business model, uh, and then will bring about a, a group of uh, new wealth. And then, of course, how to distribute that wealth is another issue. Now. Uh, I think on that notion, uh, today I really want to share with you about what will be the driving force of the future, especially to enhance a stable society and to enhance the economic stability as well as social stability. Okay. Now, under that thought, uh, I couldn't help to think of another uh, statement made by uh, Winston Churchill, and uh, that was after World War II, when uh, Great Britain was uh, debating internally how would they adopt their colonial policy. They would let them become independent, or they would fight against that trend, because that represents a lot of wealth for uh, Great Britain. Churchill said one thing. He said the wind is blowing, using the uh, old navigation uh, terminology. And wind is blowing, so we cannot resist former colony become independent. Now, this has really nothing to do with uh, my talk, but there's little to do. So let's check the wind of the future, okay? Now, the primitive way of checking the wind of the future is you lick your finger and then see, you know, which side dry, you know, become dry first, okay? You know, so I would uh, uh, take this opportunity to argue uh, in, in the future development, one of the very important <coughs> trend or the direction of the wind is the rise of uh, emerging market. The rise of emerging market uh, is a great opportunity for Taiwan. The rise of the emerging market, uh, I would argue every emerging market nation, when they begin their social, economic, and political development, they will have to go through a lot of new experiences. But the important thing is, I think those experiences uh, is already our assets. You know, in the past 60 years of Taiwan development, we went through every stage of development. Uh, we have encountered uh, labor dispute, and therefore we passed the labor standard law, and then environmental issue, and uh, 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 political system has been challenged. And uh, uh, all this development will happen in the emerging market nations. So the idea is uh, how we capture the opportunity. And we also witness during this round of changes, we have a situation of uh, uh, contemporary socialism and capitalism. When I say contemporary socialism, is the old form of socialism, such as communism, is adopting a lot of uh, 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 essence of capitalism, but not quite. Uh, they, for instance, China has a lot of state-owned company, but Taiwan's strength is not within state-owned company. It's within private sector company. Now, and then, of course, 
they talk about this emerging market, they have to decide what they want to use state power to uh, develop their economy or they want to use private entrepreneurs. Of course, my argument is pretty obvious. I would argue uh, we need using private sector and entrepreneurship uh, to drive the future development. Now, uh, what is entrepreneurship, innovation, and what is private sector? Without saying all the evidence are in Taiwan during Taiwan's past 60 years uh, development. And uh, we had to deal with technology, and a lot of speakers have been talking about technology, uh, but I want to emphasize, besides technology, we had to develop new business model. Okay. Any technology, when it, uh, it, it has its own uh, importance of application, once you apply those technology, you need a business model. And in, within business model, one of the important elements is income model. And therefore, uh, another important element is, well, since we are talking about redistribution of wealth, how to encourage the growth of startup company and small medium-sized enterprise become very, very important. Now here we'll make a big distinction uh, between Taiwan and many other nations. I think Taiwan and the United States are really close ally in this regard, in, in terms of uh, encouraging entrepreneurship in the startup company. Now one way to measure it is uh, we can look at every five years or every 10 years, whatever you want, you know, how many newly emerged company have become the first thousand big company. We have a lot of evidence here. Now when I give a lecture in China, it's my favorite argument is, you look at Taiwan's 1,000 largest company, their average life, you no, know, uh, the, the average age, not life, <laughs> life could be forever, but, uh, but age is 30 years, okay? That means 30 years ago, they're meeting small size company, and now they grow bigger. Once I mention the name of Quanta or, or uh, 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 Delta and the Acer, uh, once I mention those names, they are fully convinced that these are all private sector company. So this is our strength, but we need to, uh, for the future, uh, uh, we need to encourage more and more companies become the future Barry Land, the future uh, uh, Bruce Chen. And of course, we also need other uh, elements to support this growth. Capital and financial market become very important. We're relatively backward in that. So when I, whenever I hear that the venture capital is only interested in investing in uh, pre uh, IPO company. I feel very sad. I think what we really need them for is to invest in startup company. Okay. So that under that wing, uh, I I think we need some changes on that. And then when we talk about private sector, why I kept on mentioning private sector. Private sector is playing with their own money. They treasure every dime of money in terms of manage their risk and manage their, 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 their return. Okay. So uh, they are really the backbone of economic growth based on the Taiwan experience and uh, experience in the United States. And another thing that is extremely important for private sector growth is the growth of private sector would enhance the middle class. Now, Middle class is really the guarantee and also the most important assets of any nation to ensure their social, economic, and political development. Okay. If you want a, a stable society, you need middle class. I think this is more or less beyond argument, but maybe other speakers can pick on that. Uh, the uh, equal opportunity is another important issue in the enhanced growth of a, a, a private sector because it's based on your own knowledge, innovation, your own ability to determine whether you're a loser or a winner. And 
again, if opportunities are equal, then that's also the best guarantee to create a harmonious society. And then talking about how to make this happen. Uh, <clears throat> I recently have been thinking and worrying about how private sector, government sector, and educational institution can cooperate with each other. Now, which caused me worry a lot because uh, the three forces uh, can have a much better attitude toward each other in, in terms of uh, uh, cooperation. Okay? Of course, private sector has a lot of uh, uh, knowledge. They have intellectual property. Uh, they know how to commercialize technology. Uh, they know how to create a new business model. But government sector and educational institute is relatively weak on that. So how do we uh, encourage government to remove some of the uh, barrier, okay, to ensure that, the, for instance, for research result or research institute to be commercialized easier? Um, educational institute, you know, whether they could uh, come up with uh, better courses to enhance the uh, spread of knowledge, sharing of knowledge. You know, Apple Foundation is very proud that our YEF, Young Entrepreneur for the Future Program, now National Taiwan University recognized, um, if I'm correct, two credit for students to enroll in our program. And Tsinghua University recognized three credits for students enrolled in our program. Other universities are still considering. Okay? So we are very happy that we can make a contribution to the educational system, but not within the formal system. Okay? Um, government sector has a lot to do. Okay? I have a lot of expectation, and uh, uh, we think Taiwan has a lot of opportunity, for instance, why the privately owned, uh, uh, privately invested uh, hospital cannot, cannot choose a cooperation to run its business. Uh, why government don't recognize them as a business, but rather a non-profit organization. The private sector investing in uh, uh, educational system, we encounter the same problem. You know, why government uh, will not recognize them or give them the choice of uh, 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 running it like a business to cooperatize it? Because there's a big market internationally. Okay? So there's much to be expected from uh, government regulation and there's much to be respected from uh, educational institution in terms of uh, <coughs> their future reform. Okay? And uh, of course, uh, most importantly, is we look at the uh, uh, global issue and the challenges. Okay? Now, we look at, uh, we are facing a lot of interesting problem. This problem is also opportunity. Okay? We just go through that, you know, healthcare and uh, uh, creative industry and green technology and green industry and uh, food and agriculture. Food and agriculture, I want to emphasize, because the, the world is going to be facing a food shortage and a food safety problem. And uh, this, we can exercise our joint effort to promote the new area. I just only name a few. Uh, it, it, certainly, there are other areas to be developed. So in, the, uh, in anticipation, the, the next 10 years, uh, the vision for the for for uh, 2020, I think we have a lot of work to do, and let's do it together. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>